Bethany family, stand and worship with us. Bethany, we're so glad that you're here with us to worship. Well, let's continue in worship. Let the King of Might be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of Might be the shadow.
heads in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that we were able to have family, times with our family this week, Thanksgiving, of the people that we love, and I just pray that you're in this place today as Andy brings you the message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated and watch the screen. about the soil that is unlocking the seed. See, many of us have been saying, God, get me out of this soil. I know it's not your way, but it is my way. And my way is always perfect. Yes, Jesus had to die so that I could live. What is David without Goliath? Just a shepherd boy that never becomes king. What is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego without the idol that they had to bow to? What are they without the fire? Just three boys that we would have never heard about. What is Rahab without the wall? What is Joshua without an army? Look, what, what are you? Look, what is Daniel without the lion's den? Just a guy we didn't know prayed in this room. Maybe the stuff coming against you was not sent to kill you. Maybe it was sent to reveal the seed that's inside of you. I came to tell you today, you this is just the foundation of what he's trying to do. Good morning, Bethany family. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? There we go. Um, we have our donut Sunday this Sunday. This is our family service, and so we have our elementary age kids in here with us today. And so um, if you see kids or hear them talking, just roll with it, all right? Um, if you are a kindergarten through fifth grade and you are in this room, go ahead and come on down and see Miss Chelsea and Miss Danica and come get your activity sheet. She's got pens for you too. Um, if you guys fill out that activity sheet, come see me at the end of service and I'll have a candy for you, all right? And dads, if you want to get up and grab one too so you can keep your attention, that's perfectly fine. Nobody will judge you, okay? Everybody is busy shuffling right now, so now is the time to go get another donut, if you would like one, all right? It's time to stock up, all right? Um, but those of you that don't know, my name is Andy Morsicato, and I am the next-gen pastor here at Bethany Church. I work with our kids, kindergarten through fifth grade on Sundays, and our teenagers on Wednesday nights, and, um, and so that's kind of the main, my main responsibility is in those areas. And we have a good, good time on Wednesdays and on Sundays. Um, our Wednesday night service has been going great. So for those of you that have been giving to Wednesday nights or giving to you, thank you so much for that. Um, we've had an average of 37 kids coming every Wednesday, which is awesome. And so, um, so if you're a teenager in this room and you need a place to come, come on with it. We are there from 5 o'clock until 8 o'clock, okay? And we also do van rides home. So, um, but I'm really excited to get into today's message. And before we do that, can we just pray and just get our hearts in the right place um, before we just dive into his word? All right, so let's go and just bow our heads and let's just pray and let's just talk to the Lord um, before we get into it today. All right. Lord, thank you for everybody that is here. Thank you for everybody that is watching online. And Lord, I pray that you would just speak through me this morning. I pray that your spirit would be evident in this room. All we have is the Holy Spirit in our Bibles. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just speak to us, that you would move us. For maybe the Christian in here that is just stagnant right now, doesn't know what the next step is for them, I pray that they would make that step today, that they would overall just move, that they would go. And, Lord, just be in the room as we dive into your word this morning. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm excited to get into this today. Um, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27, just to kind of kick us off. So if you want to go ahead and turn your Bibles there to Matthew Chapter 7, we'll be in 24 through 27. And it says this, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come, it will collapse with a mighty crash, all right, with a mighty crash. Because today we're talking about foundation. Everybody say foundation. 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 That's what we're talking about today, foundation, all right? And if you believe it or not, your house has a foundation, okay? Because in Florida, our soil is mainly just sand, okay? 
good old-fashioned American sand, all right? And so we got sand in the majority of the places, so we have what's called a foundation underneath our homes, apartments, whatever the situation might be, and we have a foundation that is mainly rock and cement and all the beautiful ingredients that go into that, all right? So before we get into this, can I just ask you a question this morning? How is your foundation? How are you doing how is your soul, like if we were to be honest before we dive into God's truth and God's word, how are you doing? And not the Thanksgiving, how you guys just got done with Thanksgiving, you can see that one aunt or uncle, how are you doing? I'm doing great. The kids are great. Husband's great. We did not get in a fight on the way here. We are blessed right? And that's how we mainly talk. But really, before we dive into the meat of God's Word this morning, I want to honestly ask you and for you to ask yourself, how am I doing? Where am I at? What is my foundation? If the rains and the storms and the winds were to come, would you still be standing firm? Or would your house be flat? If you were to be honest, how are you doing this morning? If you were to analyze yourself to see where you're at, and maybe for some of you in here, You've came in this morning because you're rebuilding. Maybe you were in a place years ago when you thought you had the foundation la laid out, you thought that you were on bedrock, you thought that everything was great, and then it turns out the whole time that you were living on sand. And you're in the process of rebuilding and regrowing and fixing things up. And maybe for you in the first time of your life, you're like, Andy, I don't know why he's talking about bedrock so much. I don't know what's happening right now. It's all going to make sense as we continue into this lesson. But I just want you to be honest with yourself. Where are you at this morning? Are you on bedrock? Is your faith grounded? Are you solid? Are you good? Or are things not so good right now? If you've ever had a very, very close friend, you can always have that conversation of like, how are you doing? I'm okay. And then you look at your friend and you go, how are you really doing? And that's normally your cue to cry, and you break down. You're like, I'm sorry, this is all going on. It's all piling up in the Black Friday, and the shopping, and the kids, and my husband, and all this is going on. And it just builds, okay? And some of you, you know who you are. You're a builder, okay? You let things build up inside you. It's mainly dads. We just take it, and we take it, and we take it, and we just like, Brah! we're done. You know who you are, okay? And then there's the people that say exactly what's on their mind, in the moment, nothing gets put away. If you want it, you got it, honey. You know what's going on in my head. You know who you are, all right? So everybody knows where they're at in that sense, okay? But we have to spend time with the framework. We can't just rush it, all right? You find your foundation on God's ideas and not men's ideas, okay? Because so many times we put so much thought, we put so much love on people, and then people fail us and we get mad at God about it. We cannot put our hope and our trust in people. I've talked about this may, most of the times that I speak in here on a Sunday. I'll bring this up. Your spouse makes a horrible God. They make a hor I know like, oh, she's a goddess. I get it, okay? But I'm just saying your spouse makes a horrible God. Your kids make a horrible God. But they're my angels. Are they? Are they? The angels? Okay, so we, we fall into that place where it's like we just worship, our, we worship these people or we worship people in politics or we worship our kids or we worship our parents and then our parents fail us. We all have that moment when you're like, my dad's the strongest around. And now he gets up and he's moaning the whole time he gets up. It's just like a low, a low like gets louder. And it, like, but that was superhero a couple years ago, right? And so we, we realize that, and so I just want us to bring us back to that place. If we want to have that foundation, if we want to be in a good place, we have got to remember that we've got to focus on God's ideas for our lives and not people's, okay? You let him establish your home and not man. Let him establish your home and not man. Let him, let God, let God establish your home and not people. People will fail you. I know they're awesome, and I know they sound great, and they're super, super sweet, but they will fail you eventually, okay? For us to build our house on solid rock, we have to, for, we have to, for us, we have to follow God's will. For us, we have to have undeniable joy. For us to be steadfast, steadfast and strong in his will and do what he's called us to do, we have got to believe and focus on him, okay? For us to be steadfast and strong, I need all the kids in here to show me your muscles. Show me your muscles. There we go. There we go, okay? We got to be steadfast and strong, Okay? little harner up there. He's flexing on him, okay? We got we to gotta show off our muscles. We got to be strong. 
if we believe that God is who he says that he is, we can have that strong foundation by believing in him. And we're saying foundations this morning, but we're really going to get to this other word. Now, this other word that we're going to bring up today is the reason what makes dogs so great. Raise your hand if you love dogs. Yes, they're amazing, okay? They're awesome, all right? Yes, they shed. Yes, you got to do the whole puppy training thing, and maybe you get a small dog because your daughter wanted the small dog, and now you got the small dog, and you told everybody you hated the small dog, but now you love the small dog, but you can't tell everybody in the family because then you're going against what you said. Maybe you've been there. I don't know, okay? But dogs are awesome because of this one word, obedient. Obedient. That's what makes them so great. Some of you guys are like, Andy, you haven't met my dog. It does what it wants when it wants, okay? It's like a cat, all right? I don't know, but majority of dogs are obedient. And we believe in this so much that America, okay, our society has found this so important that they have these obedience schools for dogs. And obedience schools range from $30 to $80 a class, all right? That's just a class. We're talking almost college credit money, okay? And it's for these dogs so they can be what? Obedient. They can do what we say. When we say go, they go. When we say sit, they sit. So they can be obedient. And so we say foundations today, but really the sole foundation is obedience, okay? Everybody say obedience on three. One, two, three. Obedience, okay? We got kids in here, so it's going to be very interactive, the whole sermon, so that way I can keep their attention. They're not like, ooh, squirrel, okay? Or why are there hangers hanging that look like snow? That's so weird, okay? Like, I got to keep everybody moving, okay? So obedience is really what we're talking about today. Our foundation must be obedience to Christ. Go ahead and write that down. Text it to yourself. Email it to somebody. For those of you that still might use email on the daily, um, but our foundation must be obedience to Christ. So now that we know this, now that we know that our foundation is obedience to Christ, let's look at this verse again in Matthew 24 through 27. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid what? Rock, right? Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. He says here, clear as day, the most foolish thing that you could do is not obey God's teaching. For you to be the most foolish person out there, for you to be super just foolish, not smart, there's other words, but I'm not going to use them, super not smart, a not a good idea, is to not follow God's teaching. Where do we mainly hear God's teaching? The church. The church. We mainly hear God's teaching in church. We worked hand over foot with a bunch of volunteers um, to get our live up and going because we know that some people wouldn't feel safe coming in during this pandemic and all that stuff. And we worked super, super hard to get you guys to be able, for us to be able to go live. And then now we're coming back in person. And so whether you're watching live or here in person, I'm thankful for you because you're being obedient and taking in his lesson, his teaching, his words. Because at the end of the day, all we have is the Holy Spirit living inside of us and our Bibles. And if this, if this Sunday service, us right now together, oh, so nice. If this is it for the week, you're not going to make it. By Thursday, you're going to forget mainly about all of this. Besides, you had a stomach ache because you ate seven donuts in the bathroom. Okay? So for us, okay, we have got to be obedient and get into that word during the week. I've shared this time and time again. Sherry Lamb shared with me one time that Brian Blair gets in his word every morning, and she saw that every morning as a kid, and that's a testimony to her personally. When she told me that story, I said, man, I hope Balin says something like that about me. I hope that she sees that I'm in my word. Because that's where we need to be. Yes, this is great. This is awesome. This is where you should be. Absolutely. And the reason why we do this fifth Sunday is so your kindergarten through fifth graders can see dad raise his hands in worship. They can see dad taking in God's word. They can see mom worshiping God. They can see mom opening up their Bibles, taking in God's words. That way you can be an example to your kids. Am I your kid's pastor and your youth pastor? Absolutely. But you parents in here, you are the heroes. You're the heroes. I know you're like, Pastor Andy, like my kid loves you. They do, okay, because we have a lot of fun. But it's easy to love the kid or love the guy with candy. 
it's harder to love the person that is telling them to go clean up their room. So for us today, we got to make sure that we're in our word. We got to make sure that we're in our teaching. We got to make sure that we're an example um, to our kids. We got to make that very, very clear, okay? Because sometimes our kids will open up the door, because for some of you guys, it's just hard to get here on a Sunday, if we were just honest, okay? So I've heard different stories from different people. It's hard to get here. It's hard, hard to watch online. It's hard to do this. It's hard to do that. And I say this with the most love possible. There's no excuses. There's no excuses. With all the content, with all the word that's out there, with all, all the churches, that are, so many churches are live right now. And so for us, there's no excuse why we can't take in God's teaching. There's no excuse why we can't take in God's wisdom. I am doing all that I can on the backside, on the back of the house, for your kids in church and youth and all that. But you guys got to do the rest. You got to be that example. Oh, Pastor Andy, I'm busy. Oh, you're busy. All right. Raise your hand if you're busy in this room. Are you busy, church? We're all busy. And then for those of you that have these things called crickets and you're crafting, this is a whole other world of busy, okay? So for those of you that are crafters and like this Christmas right now, we're all busy. We're all busy. Everybody's busy. But there's no excuse to not make that time for God's word, okay? We have got to do that. We have got to be obedient in that. Sometimes it's hard for me to be obedient to man, let alone to God. Okay, if we're just, it, it's, it's hard to be obedient all the time. If I were to be honest with you, when I see a speed limit sign, I'm not like, yup, I'm going to do that number. I see that, I see that speed limit sign, I'm like, WWJD, five over. That's what he would do, okay? That's not obedient. Could a cop pull me over for doing five over? Yes. And am I going to name drop everybody in my family that's a cop when he pulls me over? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, was I still in the wrong? Yes, I wasn't obedient. My mom and my aunts, they would always pop their gum. You know these, these gum poppers, okay? They're real, they're among us, okay? I taught myself to pop my gum because I wanted to be just like my mom and my aunts, okay? So I learned really good. It took me for, like forever to learn, okay? But I finally got, I'm, I can pop my gum so loud, okay? It's amazing. And so sometimes, you know, me and Chelsea are getting along, we're on a good stretch. I just like to mess it up, you know? And so I'll get some gum, and we'll be together, and we're just hanging out watching a movie or something, or driving. Driving's the best one, because it echoes off the front windshield. And so one time we were driving, and it's the same steps every time. I pop it once, I get the look. It's just like a mouth shut, what are you doing? And then I pop it again. You gotta wait a couple minutes. You gotta, you gotta lay it out. You can't just do it all in one shot, Okay couple minutes pass, I do it again, and then I get the forward where the neck drops, the, the, what are you doing? And I'm just like, oh, there's nothing, you know, and then I'll let a couple other minutes go by, and then I'll pop it again, and I get the stop, stop, and then I smile, she doesn't, and then I let a couple more minutes go by, and then I either get the you're unbelievable with a walk out the room, okay, or I get Andrew John, it's one or the other, okay, I either get Andrew John, are you serious, or you're unbelievable, you're like a child. And then I laugh. She doesn't laugh. It's good times. And so I, sometimes I just can't even be obedient to my wife. So this whole thing of obedience, I get that it's hard, but church, it's possible. Everybody say it's possible on three. One, two, three. It's possible, okay? It's possible. And not only that, but God blesses our obedience, okay? We're going to look in this verse in uh, Psalm 15. And before we get to that, I want to say two things, okay? Obedience leads to freedom in Christ. Obedience leads to freedom in Christ. Disobedience, okay? Disobedience leads to freedom in sin. Disobedience leads to freedom in sin. And so I know we can make a joke about obedience and, and all that stuff, but really we have got to be obedient to Christ. If you want our houses on solid bedrock, if you want to be able to be able to stand firm in this verse that we're about to go to, obedience leads to freedom in Christ. And I've never felt more free than following Jesus with my whole heart and giving him everything. 
from praying whether what girl I should marry to praying for the timing of having kids to the praying for the job and the calling on my life. I just, I just, I gave it all to him. I want to be obedient to him, whatever he wants. And church, he's blessed that. But I've also lived in the disobedience, which leads to freedom and sin. And it sounds fun at first, and for those of you that have had the party stage where you, you wilded it out for a while and now you're trying to come back or whatever your situation might be, that freedom in sin sounds fun. It looks great. And then once you get in there for a while, you're just like, ah. Oh. It's not fun looking over your shoulder every time. It's not fun when your parents can't look at you because you're so dishonest. It's not fun when you get arrested. It's not fun when those things happen. So disobedience leads to freedom and sin, which sounds amazing at first, but it is not. True freedom is found in Christ. Bottom line, end of story, cut, paste, print, it's done. We have got to be obedient because obedience leads to freedom in Christ. We're going to look at this Psalm 15. David lays it out for us. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. Speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners. I hope I said that right. And honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. And I don't know about you, church, but I want to stand firm forever. If you have kids in here, let me just tell you this. Your kids need you to stand firm. Andy, I spank them. That is not what I'm talking about, okay? Standing firm in your faith. Standing firm in what you believe in. Well, Pastor Andy, I don't have any kids. It doesn't matter whether you have kids or whether you don't have kids. You have kids in your church, yes? I hope that I'm not pouring into kids on Sundays and pouring into teenagers on Wednesdays, and then they come to church in here looking at you. I know you think nobody's watching you and nobody's following you, but I guarantee you, you have influence of some kind. Pastor Andy, I don't go out. It doesn't matter. You have influence. And church, I need you as adults to stand firm in what you believe in. Because when a 16-year-old gets saved and I invite them over here for service and they come to church here on the first time, I want them to be surrounded by Christians that are standing firm, not people that are like, eh, eh, it's okay. We got to be obedient. We got to stand firm. Now, when you read that verse in Psalm 15, all right, I want you to read it not as if you're reading it about somebody else. I want this to describe you. We're going to read this one more time, and I want this verse to describe you. If I were to do your funeral, I would hope that everything that I say in Psalms 15 is true about you, and I hope that we would be able to stand firm through this Psalm 15. Let's go ahead and read this out one more time, but this is describing you. It's no longer a verse of what David's calling us to do. I want you to think of this verse as describing you as a person. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. Are we being blameless in the way that we live? Are we doing what is right? You know what's right. My 14-year-olds and youth, they know what's right, and they know what's not right. You can feel it in your heart. Speaking the truth from sincere hearts. There's a difference between speaking the truth just to say the truth and speaking to a truth from sincere hearts. Like, hey, I'm saying this because I really care about you. I'm not saying this to gossip about you. I'm saying this because I really care about you. Those who refuse to gossip, no need to go into that. You already know. Or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord. Thank you for keeping up with me. And keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent, such people will stand forever. That's you. That's you. Pastor Andy, that's not me. Oh, that needs to be you. And if that's not you, what do you need to change this morning? So that is you. Because that, that needs to be you. We have got to stand firm. We have got to be there as believers. Be there as people that follow Jesus. Be there and be obedient in the way that we live. 
If there's one thing you need to change off that list of what I just read, write it down, text it to yourself. That's what I'm going to work on this week. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to change. I got a friend of mine that writes down what they need to work on in their journal. And he works on it and works on it and works on it until he gets it down. If that's what you need to do, then do it. But that's where we need to be so we can stand firm. That's where we need to be, obedience. Our foundation is obedience to Christ. That's where we need to be. In Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 49, it says it like this. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid bedrock. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it is well, bit, well built. Verse 49, but anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. Now in that verse, in the middle of verse 48, it says, it is like a person building a house who digs deep. So, a lot of you guys are image people. You got to have an image to kind of understand. So, for us, we got to dig deep, okay? This is a shovel. Some of you guys already dislike this shovel because it reminds you of long weekends, okay? Or for those of you who maybe use a shovel at work every single day, you're like, why is he bringing a shovel out? I'm off today, okay? I don't know what the situation might be, but we have got to dig deep, to find that bedrock, to find that foundation, we have got to dig deep. So many times we just skim the surface. I'm done. I'm tired. Let's build the house. This is fine. This will work. This will work. Or it's going to be good. And then it ends up not being good. Because we got to dig deep. We got to dig deep to find that foundation. We got to dig deep into our word. We got to make church a priority. We got to love him with everything in us. But so many times we just skim the surface. Like, oh, oh. I'm tired. I'm busy. It doesn't work. We have got to dig deep. In the deep, I asked you first, like, how is your soul this morning? How is your heart? How, what is your, how what's your foundation look like? If your foundation does not look good right now, you need to uproot some stuff and you need to fix it. Because that house will collapse. Sand makes a horrible foundation. Andy, why do we live in Florida? I don't know, but we're here. Okay? We've got to dig deep. We've got to dig deep. And can we just have a side conversation for a minute? Can we stop focusing on other people's foundations for a minute and you just worry about your own? Because a lot of times what we do is we see on Instagram or Facebook, like, oh, they look so happy. You don't know what that foundation really is. The foundation's laid, but is it on bedrock? You don't know. What does your foundation look like? Well, I'm fine. Are you? Stop worrying about everybody else's foundation. We see it on Facebook and Instagram. Like, oh, they look so happy. Oh, they're doing so great. Who cares? You're responsible for your faith. Yours. As we go into this Christmas season, you're like, oh, the, oh, the kids got all that they want. Oh, wow. Sure wish we had that, hon. I wish I had that truck. We do that. You don't know if they dig deep or they didn't. But it's not about what they did, it's about what you did. You get one life with your family. Are you digging deep to get to that foundation? It is your responsibility. Well, Pastor Andy, I've had a rough life. We all have. We've all had the storms, we've all had the rains. Well, that's not fair. I know. I know. I've talked with teenagers, and they tell me their story, and I'm just like, gosh, I just want to adopt you. It's just not fair that some of these things that these kids go through. It's not fair what you had to go through in your life. But if we dig deep, we can roll through that fairness with the Lord. We can get through that with obedience. We can live out a long, live out a long life with Psalm 15, a faithfulness of endurance. But we've got to make sure that we are obedient. So we can have that solid foundation. In Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19, we're going to look at a guy that had a choice and that chose to be obedient. 
will be Acts chapter 9 for a little bit, verses 1 through 9. And it says this. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. Whew, rough. So he went to the high priest and he requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of, on the way, of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Is Saul a good guy, yes or no? No. Okay, you're not like, oh, you should go hang out with Uncle Saul. He's going to bring some people in with chains. Run along, honey. No, okay. Verse 3. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down, shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And this is Jesus, okay. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. He has a choice now. He has a choice to be obedient or be disobedient. The same choice that we have every single morning. Is he going to be obedient in this, or is he going to be disobedient? Let's find out what happens. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus, and he remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Just like you guys. Nobody ate in the last three days, I'm sure, okay? Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling, Ananias, yes, Lord, he replied, The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. There's always one. Okay, it's like your kids. There's always one that wants to ask questions. Why do I got to go there? Why do we got to get ready? Why do I have to go potty? And that's Ananias. Ananias was like, listen, I'm not going to go see Uncle Saul. He's mean. He's murdered people, okay? Let's see what God has to say. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my namesake. So Ananias went, he got, he, he got it the second time, like, hey, we're leaving, huh? We're leaving. Okay, so he got it. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight, and then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength, just like you did on Thanksgiving, okay? So, for us, for us, what does this mean for us? For us, this means that if Saul could change to Paul and be obedient to Christ, because we know that Paul wrote majority of the, the majority of the New Testament— like for him to be able to do that because through his obedience, then what can God do through you? Well, Andy, I'm just an engineer. I'm just a preschool teacher. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. I'm, I just do blue-collar work. I just, I'm always in the office. I'm always working at this store. I'm always doing this. I'm always, it doesn't matter. Like Saul didn't like lay out all his excuses. He just went and did it. And like church, we're called to go and make disciples. We're called to go. And if Saul can do it, and he made a change, and he followed Christ with everything in him, you can do the same thing. If you don't know how God can use you through your obedience, just start praying about it. Dive into God's Word about it. Meet with me or pastor about it. Like, we just want to talk to you about like, how you can be obedient through Jesus. Serve. Like So many times I have people come and they, they work in our youth department, and they get more out of it than our teenagers do half the time because they're serving. They're using their gifts for Him. And so for us, if you're like, I just don't know where I belong. You do belong. And if you don't know where you can fit in, just start praying. Start seeking God's word. Start leaning on him because God wants to bless your obedience, but we got to be willing to be obedient in the way that we live, in the way that we walk, in the way that we talk, 
in the way that we live our lives and what we do and what we say. And so many times for us, we have got to live that out because obedience leads to freedom in Christ. And when that light fell on Saul and he became blind, in that moment, did Saul trust Jesus? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, he did. He trusted him. He said yes. Now, did Ananias, okay, yeah, he had a little question in there. Okay, there's always that one person that's like, why are we really doing this? What's the plan? Okay, after a little bit of arguing, at the end of the day, did Ananias do what God told him to do? Yes. Yes, he did. He did it. And because of both those men being faithful, because of both of those men being obedient, God blessed that. Reach the nations through them. That's an amazing thing for God to show up and show out for these men. And he can do the same thing for you in your life. That emptiness, that feeling of, of being alone, that feeling of depression, anxiety that just creeps in. The only way for God to really handle that is we have to be obedient to him. We have to let him in. We have to have faith. We've got to lay out that foundation that only he can do because God blesses obedience. God blesses obedience. Now, church, just, just look at me on this. You are going to be obedient to something in this life. You're going to be obedient to something. So why not be obedient to God that can truly provide for you? And, and I see this all the time. I don't see adults as much, but I see, I work with a lot of teens and kids, and, and they're obedient to something. We're all obedient to something. We're all going to serve something or someone. And I talked earlier about how people make horrible gods. Are we called to love them and lean on them? Absolutely. But you're going to be obedient to something. It's like when you were a kid, whether you have kids or whether you were a kid at some point, which I guarantee is probably true. Um, when you were a kid, you had really, I mean, at the end of the day, one rule. Be obedient. And how your day went, went off of how obedient you were to your parents. Some days, I got smacked. Some days, I tried to juke my mom, but being a chunky little, little kid, you know, she caught me by the throat a couple times because I was running my mouth, all right? My day was gauged on obedience. If I wanted to have a great day, I put my shoes on, I picked up my dishes, I was nice to my sister, which is probably one of the most difficult things to do growing up. Now, it was good. It's a good day. But some days, as you know, kids wake up and they're like, today's not going to be a good day. I'm going to mess your day up. And it's the same way with the Lord. If you want to have a good day, if you want to have a good year, we can't let other things affect our year. We just got to be obedient to him and love him in that way. Our foundation is held together by obedience. Now, when you lay a foundation, I want to end with this. When you lay a foundation in a house, okay, you have what's called footers around the outside, okay? Fun fact, Pastor, built, or Pastor dug the footers for the gymnasium over there. Yep, he did. True story. All right. Footers are 16 to 20 inches deep, all right? And that is the outside. That is the perimeter of your home, okay? And then a pad is poured in the middle of your home. This is where you live. The reason why we do this is because we live in Florida. We have sand as soil. Sand makes a horrible foundation, as you know from Scripture, and also just because facts, okay? Um, and then the pad in the middle is about four to six inches thick, all right? And then you border that with what's called float boards. So you put these boards on the outside, you drain the cement in, you fill it up, and then you got four inches on the, on the inside, and then about whatever I said earlier on the outside. So that's how you lay the foundation, all right? And so for us, if we spend so much time and effort on our house foundations, because if you rush that process, it could be catastrophic. If your foundation is off at the bottom, it'll be off all the way up to the peak of your roof. So it's, it's, it's crucial that your foundation is leveled. It is crucial that it is done right. So right now, if you are building a house and you're like, the foundation's taking forever. I just don't get this. You just be patient. You don't want to rush the process. Let them do their thing, okay? But if we spend that much time in our physical houses for our foundations, why would we not work on our foundations in our hearts, in our souls, our foundations in our lives? And so up here, all right, I do a lot, a lot of object lessons with kids and students, and so I try to put this together 
Uh, I was going to put this together in front of you, but there's too many dads in here, and it's too much pressure. I don't need that. So um, I don't need, like, oh, he's off of an eighth of an inch. Mm, not good. Should measure twice, cut once. I don't need that. All right, it's Sunday. So I built this square, and we can say that this is the foundation, okay? There's three things involved in this. There's screws, which are going to represent obedience. There's wood that's going to represent God's word. And the impact behind me, good old Ryobi, one of our sponsors, all right? Just kidding. <laughs> all right? It's going to represent you, okay? It's going to represent you. If screws were not in this, could I be doing this right now? No, okay? If this falls apart, it's going to be super embarrassing, all right? So the screws are obedience. The only way that I'm able to have a foundation to work off of is through obedience. It's through these screws, and what happens is many times is we start off like this, like you got saved, you're in your word every day, you're showing up to church, you even raised your hand during worship when Chelsea told you to, you're like, you know, I'm, I'm going to feel that. Yep, let's do this. Yep, I get it now. All right. So, and then over time, you weren't really in your word that much. Or someone said something to you at church and you're like, I don't like church anymore. Because you let what one person say to you ruin it for you. That's not right, right? And so like all these things slowly creep in, and what happens is you end up losing obedience due to people. So like, oh, this sin's okay, so I'm going to do that. I think it was the first time I've ever had power tools up here during a, a sermon. So like, we're going to let that go, or it's really not that important for me to read my word every single day. So I'll only read it whenever one of the pastors tell me to. Oh, that's embarrassing. So... And slowly, as we take these screws out, which are really obedience, what we end up with is something that it really wasn't originally supposed to be. Because God wants us to have that bedrock foundation. He wants us to have that solid foundation that we can work off of, that we can raise kids on, that we can have a marriage on, that we can grow as a church on. And so what happens is, when we get rid of all that obedience, we end up with just a pile of wood. This is now really good for nothing but a fire, Okay. And we know that if we're not obedient to Christ, we end up in a fire, right? So, for us, okay, we're called to have that foundation, okay? We're called to have that foundation. This is not what you were designed to have, church. And so many times we have our lives like this, and we get depressed over it, and we get scared about it, and we let the anxiety and the depression sink into a place that we really didn't want it to be, and now we're doing things we didn't really originally think that we would be, and I thought my marriage was good, and I thought the kids were good, and, and it piles and piles and piles up until you literally just have a pile of your foundation. This is now really good for nothing. Our foundation is supposed to be solid, but the only way that that is possible is through obedience. Your kids are not the only ones that are called to be obedient. We are. And so my prayer and my hope for you as your next-gen pastor is that you as parents, as you as church members, as you as grandparents, as you as everybody in this room, whether you're in kindergarten or a beautiful young age of 98, it doesn't matter, okay? My prayer and my hope is that you would have that foundation through obedience, that we would have that. The world is not falling apart. That's not what we're in charge of. You are not in charge of holding this world together. You're just in charge of your foundation. So be obedient in that, and you'll be able to take the wind. You'll be able to take the rain. You'll be able to take the storms that are going to happen. In church, they're coming if they're not already there. Everybody in here has had a bad day. Everybody in here has had a bad month, and some of you guys have been through some bad years. And they're going to happen again. And I hope that we have that foundation to carry our families through, to carry ourselves through, through obedience and praise to Jesus. So, Lord, thank you so much, church, for allowing me to preach. I pray that we would just keep that obedience this year, that obedience leads us to just having a solid foundation, and let's just keep that. Let's just stay focused on him through this season. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 All right, let's go ahead and pray it up, okay? Lord, just thank you so much for the opportunity to speak this morning. And, Lord, I pray that we would have that foundation through obedience that we would be like Saul and just step right into that and become Paul and step into that obedience and just see God work in his life. And we can have the same thing. And so Lord, I pray that we would be obedient to you, that we would be obedient to your church, that we would be obedient to your word, that we would be obedient in our own faith, that we would stop looking at other people's foundations, that we don't even know are on bedrock or not, that we would focus on ourselves and get our foundation straight through obedience to you. Thank you so much, Lord, for all these amazing people in this room. I pray that we would continue to grow with one another. I pray that we would continue to grow. I pray for the person in here, Lord, that is starting over, 
and has a lot of weight, a lot of pressure, I pray that they would just give that all to you. And Lord, I pray for the person here that maybe wants to accept you to have that faith to step into that obedience. I pray that they would just come and see me or pastor after today. And Lord, we just pray for a great, great Sunday and be with everybody's week. We love you, God, and everything you do. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Go ahead and watch the announcement video on the screen. Thank you so much for being at Bethany today. I pray God spoke to your heart through the music and the message. Have a great week and remember to love God and love others. Now here's what's happening at Bethany. If you have a prayer need, please stop by the back table as you leave today. Grab a prayer card and our pastoral team will pray for it this week. Here at Bethany, we have a food pantry that is open each week to help those in need. If you would like to help stock our pantry, you can place food items in the back. We also have a spare change box in the hall. Everything that goes in this box is used to buy Walmart gift cards to help those in need. If you want to give digitally, you can head to our website, bethanymelbourne.com and click give, or you can text Bethany Church to 77977 to get a link to give. To our guests, we want to say thank you so much for coming to Bethany today. We pray you felt the love of Christ here at Bethany today. Make sure you stop by the tent so we can get to know you more. Also, you can fill out a guest card and get a t-shirt. Make sure you stop by the tent on the way out. Bethany family, let's welcome our guest. I just want to bring up that we have a men's study coming up tomorrow, Monday night. Um, it's only $3 for pizza. You guys can sign up at the back table. Brian Blair is teaching this class, and he just is kicking off a new series. And so last time we met was kind of just an introduction to kind of get us ready for the series. And so we're really kicking off this Monday. So make sure that you're there. Um, if you can't make it or you're busy and you want me to send you some notes from it, I can. Um, but really make this effort to get there. We made it at 632 for those of you that work so that way you got time to get there. Um, but $3 for pizza. It's going to be Domino's Pizza. And just sign up at the back table so we know how much pizza to get as we get into missionary moment. Our missionary today is evangelist uh, Bob Jones. He's a home missionary project. Uh, Bob and Sue, uh, they travel all over preaching the gospel and encouraging churches, Christians. They have been to Ireland and England and India. There they have uh, distributed almost 200,000 Bibles to India alone. Uh, of course, during the COVID pandemic, uh, he's not able to travel that much. Uh, because uh, you can't really get together like uh, you were in the past. And so he's doing much of his ministry uh, online now and is just doing a wonderful job. Bob is 80 plus years old and still preaches just about every day to somebody. This is Brenda's mom's brother. This is Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob Jones, and it's Linda's uncle as well. In fact, Linda, Brenda's sister, is with us today, uh, and her husband, Kevin. They've been visiting with us over the holiday uh, this uh, Thanksgiving, and we are just have enjoyed them so much. And this is, uh, yeah, this is our uncle, but uh, he deserves our support financially and Prayerfully, he just does a wonderful job. I hope I'm still doing what he's doing at his age. It is just absolutely amazing. I love these people that don't even know the meaning of retirement. And I'm going to really get them earful when I get home for saying that, okay? Because uh, she says, you can't keep doing this forever. Well, I can too until Jesus calls me, right? Anyway, enough of that. I want to give you an, an assignment. I want to encourage you to do something for the month of December. The Gospel of Luke has 24 chapters. So your assignment is to do this. Each day, the month of December, uh, read a chapter out of Luke. 24 chapters in Luke, so that'll take you from December 1 all the way through to Christmas Eve, and you'll be finished with the Gospel of Luke, preparing your heart for the next day 
which is Christmas. So I want to encourage you to do that. All of you in this room and all of you that are watching online, read one chapter a day out of the Gospel of Luke. One other thing is this. I um, got a phone call from Mary uh, Jarbel this morning, and Barry, who was able to be with us just three weeks ago, I believe it was, sat right back here. Uh, he uh, has hospice now 24-7 and uh, sleeps a lot, and he's in those last stages of uh, uh, passing over to be with Jesus. And so would you remember to pray for Barry uh, during this time? And, of course, also for Mary, uh, the caregiver, and, and the family. Appreciate that so very much. Now, with all of that being said, I want to say, uh, Pastor Andy, that's one of the most wonderful messages I've ever heard. Uh, it was just great. And just uh, so uh, uh, applicable for all of us. Uh, next week we get back into Hebrews and then we're going to go into Christmas stuff. But next week we're kind of going to be springboarding off of just what was said today uh, about obedience. And uh, it was just, uh, just great. I am just so proud. Not what I have done or this church has done, but what God of course, is doing in your life. Of course, we support you, and we're behind you, and we love you, and sending you to school and keeping you accountable. But, you know, God has really got something really great ahead for you, buddy. And you're a great communicator. That's just a wonderful, wonderful message today. And the best part about your life is that little person standing right next to you who I call Tex. I'm telling you, you couldn't do this without a good wife. The most important decision anybody makes outside of taking Jesus Christ as Savior is who you marry and who you're going to spend the rest of your life together on this earth. Now they'll make you or break you. I'm glad I got one that's making me and you've got one that's making you, pal. All right? All right, let's all stand if you would, please. Thank you for giving. Thank you for giving to missions. You can give either online. Thank you so much for doing that. You can give in the offering plate as you leave today. Or you can uh, mail your offering in uh, that way. Or you can... Uh, Swing by the office and drop it off and, and say hello. We'd love to see you. I want to say thank you for being here today. Thank you for wearing your mask and protecting others. And we'll, we'll get through this. And it seems like the, 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 the attendance here is just getting better and better and better. In fact, these two sections right here is just about full. Now... This section, folks, we need to work. We need to get out and work this week, okay? Let's get our section full. I'm glad you're here, but this section's a little, little weaker than this section. We got people in the balcony. What I'm trying to say is this is a good, good attendance today. And thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for... Bob and Sue, and they just keep uh, preaching the gospel, and we thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you for uh, uh, Pastor Andy, the, the great message that he gave to us, a message that we will well long remember. Uh, Lord, may we leave this place with one word on our heart, and that is to be obedient, to always follow you, do what you say, and love you. Be in your word. Just, just obey you. Have a great day when we do that. Lord, uh, we uh, just uh, love you and we thank you for this time together. In your name, amen. Let's say our last verse together. Then we'll sing uh, 
our last song, and then you're dismissed. Thank you so much for being here. Just great to have each and every one of you. Thank, thanks for watching online as well. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing our last song together. God bless you. Have a great week. you're a kiddo and you did your paper, come on down for your candy.